on my presentation and view as a slideshow. Here we go. Okay. So, uh, welcome everybody. I want to th thank you for joining us today and thank Jonathan for the invitation, the opportunity, um, the lovely introduction, um, and in fact, um, being there to, to be the, the tech person on our slides today and our, on our presentation, be able to facilitate the answers to the questions. Um, in fact, in addition to uh, what I do with uh, National Home Builders as an instructor in aging in place and universal design, and then uh, working with families through Household Guardians, uh, I am actually officially a uh, volunteer with AARP California. And so that's um, the ability to have and offer this presentation uh, based on their uh, home fit guide is um, what brings us really today to, to this. So we've got some important information to share about uh, how we look at the different parts of our homes. Uh, some easy things we can do, some solutions. Uh, I'm hoping to kind of frame um, for us what's, what some of the options are and then uh, take a look at how do we find skilled folks to be able to do what we do or how do we reach out to other professionals to be able to uh, work with us for things that are beyond the scope. So again, please comment in the Q&A, comment in chat. I don't know, maybe you can even raise your hands and Jonathan will figure all of that out too. <laughs> so, I will. Here we, uh, <laughs> here we go. So we have basically three objectives uh, for today, which is looking at ways we can update our homes. And now really more than ever, this, I mean, we, we've been at home. Uh, here in California, the governor had us stay in starting early in March. Um, just as an aside and off the, the curriculum here, as it turned out, I made a large St. Patrick's Day dinner for my brothers and their wives and nobody came. <laughs> so however long ago St. Patrick's Day was, um, was certainly when we were starting to shelter in place. And so now we've had all of these months to really look at our homes with some new eyes. And that's really what brings this and makes this really an, um, a very fortunate time to be doing this kind of a workshop. Okay, okay, off the personal stuff onto, again, um, looking at ways we can update our homes, some simple fixes that we can do, and then how to reach out to specialists to be able to help us. So um, if you pre-registered, I'm sure you've got the link to the home fit guide. So this program today is gonna to kind of walk through a lot of those, not exactly page by page, but close. And um, if you, this is a, a PDF. So if you didn't get it or don't have a chance to, didn't get a chance to get it, again, I'm sure Jonathan is gonna have that um, in the chat section. Um, also, you can reach out to me uh, afterwards or, or to Jonathan to be able to get this. But whether you have it or you don't, you'll be fine. <laughs> so let's first take a look at, um, Jonathan's got a poll that we're gonna try to do the technology side here. But of the rooms in your homes, are there specific areas that are of more concern to you than others? So which room in the house? Is it the kitchen, bedroom, bathroom? Um, or do you just feel fine everywhere? So Jonathan's gonna pull up that poll and give you a chance to all click in and see. Fritzy, I'm having difficulty bringing up the poll since I forwarded the, uh, I gave you control oh, of the room. So I'm sorry. you can launch the poll from your end, uh, if you just click on the poll and you should be able to see a launch button. Do you see that at the bottom of your screen? Yes. Okay, excellent. So I just relaunched it, I think because we had tried it. There you go. Okay. 
Did it show up on everybody's screens? Okay, great. Here we go. Bathrooms are winning. <laughs> um, terrific. Another five or six seconds and we're gonna call it a day. Okay. So I'm gonna end this. Uh, two thirds of us easily uh, say it's the bathroom. A third of us say the bedroom and a third of us say the kitchen. So that was terrific. Thank you very much for that. And we will um, just go ahead and tackle uh, looking at our home fit guide, but keeping in mind two thirds of you are in fact um, interested in the bathroom concerns. So here we go. In the guide itself on pages two and three, it just kind of opens up to many of the questions about some things that we need to start to look at. So um, starting out very easily, is there a zero step entrance into the home? This is important not only for those of us who live in the house, but it's important for our visitors and visitors of all ages. So many of the things that we're looking at now work for certainly aging in place, but they also work for us as making our homes more visitable for friends, family members, people of all ages to be able to utilize the features in our homes and just feel very comfortable there. So can everybody get into the house easily? And this entrance as we start to look at it simply is not only your front door, so maybe coming in through the garage or the back door or the side door. So again, as we start to look at these things, um, this is just the first brush at um, many of the areas that we're going to touch on today. So we just started very briefly with that first one. Um, I'm just, I'm going to move on because we're going to incorporate these questions as we go through and look at some specific areas. And again, uh, this is moving on to four and five. So this is our exterior safety and lighting. And this, standing right outside the front or approaching the house is a great place to start in looking at home safety. So here we have the lever door handles. Um, and Jonathan, can you see my mouse? I can see your mouse. Okay, good. Because I'm going to use him to my cursor. Sorry, my cursor. <laughs> um, so this, in fact, is a lever door handle. And um, they came into play several years ago. One of the unintended consequences, of course, was when they were first designed, the levers were such that they would still catch your sleeve or catch the bag. So many of the newer ones, they actually, the edges of the handles wrap around. But the purpose is really easy to open uh, for no matter whether your hands are full or not. Uh, and actually, there are new manufacturers now who are creating not only levered handles, but the same handle design that can be pushed to release the latch and open the door. So manufacturers are really beginning to see that this kind of product helps people uh, of all ages and whether or not you have, I mean, originally it was like if you have arthritis and can't turn the knob or find those um, latch style door handles um, difficult to manage. So now, not only on the exteriors, but as we move forward, remember we can also put these inside the house as well. So it makes it easier uh, for entering into closets and many other rooms as well. Peoples and doorbell cameras. So clearly these doorbell cameras are the newest use of technology when it comes to the entrances of our home. And uh, peepholes have always been a solution for us. 
most of them at a standard height on the door. And maybe this is a good time to think about uh, second people. Now, the picture they've given us has side lights so that someone could peek out the door that way. <laughs> but in fact, uh, when this isn't the case, a lower, a second uh, lower people can also uh, be a solution so that you can uh, see who is at the door. And the ring doorbells and the video doorbells are now uh, making it easier for us to see uh, even remotely uh, who is at the door. Uh, so if, again, if any of you have a, um, a ring doorbell and, and have some experiences with it where it's been helpful, uh, certainly this is um, a modern piece of technology that also helps us incorporate a general security plan um, at our homes as well. Uh, in this picture, we have, it looks like the doorbell is over here. Um, and for many of our doorbells, when we're not moving toward technology, even having them lighted um, so that we can also see them. And this entrance um, also has a nice porch light right over the top as well. And that leads us to lighting. So at the front of the house, because we're working on our exteriors, lighting is absolutely critical. And certainly having motion sensor lights makes it an easy install. And there are many, many styles of these lights and you can have them set so it's not every time the dog or cat walks by, it will, it will set off. So you can set the motion sensor so it's actually going to be a little bit higher <laughs> and not set off by the, the creatures in the neighborhood. But exterior lighting is invaluable. So we, we need to have lighting over our door. And if you can, secure the lighting that also is directed at the lock itself, just to make it easier to be able to find where the key goes uh, as well. So adding lighting and uh, that can be mounted above, there are styles of lighting that can be mounted on the side of the, right over here, in which the light can also be directed toward the handle. So there's using motion sensor lights at the doorway is important. Also consider your extra lighting along the pathways as well. So having those will allow you good lighting all the way up. Many parts of the country, especially here in California, right? We use solar lights. Remembering that many of the solar lights also have little batteries in them. So you wanna make sure that those are operating um, and are located in a good location where you don't have the ground cover growing over the solar lights, as an example. Let's say a quick question, yes. and mm -hmm. this might be asking the obvious, but why is lighting so important? As we age, we need more light to be able to see effectively. And so lighting reduces the tripping hazards. It reduces, it minimizes, or it, it reduces. I can't say it minimizes because <laughs> a lot of things we need to have in place to actually minimize. But it's very important for us to be able to see clearly. Um, this particular picture has this uh, contrast along the walkway, which is also very important. But as we age, and <clears throat> excuse me, probably in the 60s, kind of when you sign up for Medicare, kind of at that age, no matter who you are and how many vitamins you've taken, you still need about 30% more light than someone in their 30s. So it's, it's <clears throat> sorry to interrupt. I mean, Go it's, ahead. Not, it's not just about being able to see who might be at your front door 
uh, or uh, but it's really about uh, minimizing the risk of tripping and of of accidents. If you're carrying yeah. groceries, if you're trying to put a key in a lock, if you're trying to navigate a walkway or or um, uh, asking somebody else to navigate a walkway, you want to make sure that the, there's as much light as possible. That's what I'm hearing. Absolutely, okay. absolutely, and it's not, and it's and it's funny because we get so used to walking in our own path. It's like we know where that little crack is in the sidewalk. Yeah, we know where that crack is in the sidewalk, except when somebody, you know, when our attention gets turned for just a minute and it's in our own house. So the opportunity today is to kind of pretend that now we are the professional kind of taking a look at our own houses from a different point of view, <clears throat> going back outside and then coming back in and saying, oh yeah, I've taken for granted that that bulb was always working or I've taken for granted that I could see along this pathway. And all of a sudden when you look and you discover that the Natal plum has grown over the whole left side of your solar lights, right? And the, the right side still lights up. So you're thinking, okay, I know where my path is, but you know, things happen. And you know, especially here, you kind of put something in the ground and most of the time it just grows. I mean, it's miraculous. Uh, so having come from New York for many years, that's why I'm so astonished by the growth of plants around here. But it's, it's the same thing, you know, it's like kind of taking a look at where that lighting is and there are lots of new kinds of project um, products and pathway lights that are very easy to install some of them now come um, that are motion sensor where you just step on the path here and the whole path lights up mm. so as opposed to walking in the supermarket where the freezer case lights up as you walk by you can you can you can actually create that same kind of lighting very easily in your own home. Thank you. For so, that. yeah. Easy to see home address. Vital. It's vital for ourselves. It's um, vital in case of emergencies. So again, where are where's the house number? Uh, many times we also depending on where we live, they're also painted on the curb, which may or may not have worn off. And so this is a chance to reassess um, how easy it is for somebody to uh, find our homes. So again, using lighting, um, big numbers, using contrast. Um, in my former neighborhood, I, I did this easy house number assessment one day. I just walked down the street and folks had beautiful silver numbers above their garage, but the wood above the garage had been painted white. So I guess at night you could see it, but during the day you couldn't. And so having the black letters on a light color or the reverse, because for a number of folks being able to see the reverse is more important. So having a dark background with well lit up letters and they don't, they don't have to be lighted. This is lovely, but clearly visible from the street, from the curb um, and on the house as well. All right. Even though the kitchen didn't get as many votes, it's earlier in the presentation. So <laughs> uh, we're going to take a look in the kitchen. Um, this is another area in which uh, safety and ease of use is really one of the things that we're looking at with this home fit. And we're not trying to solve all of the problems, but we do want to include things that just make life easier and simpler for all of us so we don't have to struggle. <sighs> One of them is the single lever faucet. So this is certainly easier to use than the knobbed handles, uh, being able to just get our temperature with, with one movement of our hand. 
this style of handles for folks who want to have the two handles, having these, I call them winged handles, these are also very easy to use and um, certainly could be a preference. But now we have, as we've seen in many commercial settings, and now as we're looking at upgrading features inside our homes, having these touchless um, automatic sensor faucets uh, are an interesting addition. Uh, and I, some of the brand new ones um, you can, are actually voice activated, she says astonishingly, and you can tell the faucet how, how much water you want. You can say, I need a cup of cold water and the faucet will figure that out. So again, that's a technology that may be way ahead of what we want to do, but if we're looking at making changes to make things easier, certainly uh, an automatic sensor. The other nice piece about this is you can't do it wrong. You know, you can come at it from the left or the right. Um, you can, you know, come at the faucet close or far back and you know, you really can't make a mistake. So everybody can get water out of this faucet. Let's see, it's uh, task lighting. So thank you, Jonathan, for asking the question about why do I spend so much time on lighting? We all need a great deal of lighting and the kitchen is a great place for us to have task lighting. So this is an example of some under cabinet lights. And again, there's lots of different products and choices. So this particular one has multiple bulbs and illuminates this part of the counter. Task lighting over an island, uh, general lighting in the room, night lighting. So very specific areas in which we're working with the extra brightness can really make us um, safer in the kitchen as well. Now there's new lighting for which I do not have a picture here, sorry folks, but actually to run the lighting at the base of the cabinets. So you can get strip lighting that runs under the base of the cabinets that will illuminate the floor and that's good for uh, wayfinding. So it's, and they can be motion sensors, so they kind of come on. So if somebody goes out to the kitchen in the middle of the night, uh, you can see uh, right there on the floor without having the bright lights come on in the room. But again, we're doing so many different tasks in the kitchen. We're preparing, we're cooking, uh, cleaning, uh, serving. So there's a lot of activity and we need to really be able to see well uh, in order to execute all those tasks. So here we've got some different handles and um, we know from the other discussion about faucets that knobbed handles are more difficult in general. So it's the same thing as having little pull knobs on our cabinets. Those are harder too. So these are um, examples of what they call D-shaped handles. So you could just essentially slide your hand in and pull the cabinet open. This is a door opener. And I've also seen them now uh, mounted in commercial spaces uh, that you could just put your foot. So it's mounted kind of at the bottom of the door to be able to pull a door open. Um, but this allows us to get into the cabinet um, or the drawer. They've put a big X on this particular style of handle um, simply because like a levered handle, it could catch your sleeve or a bag that you're carrying. Um, and this, as it turns out, happens to be very popular in kitchen design right now, I will tell you. Um, and I've seen many of them mounted vertically, uh, which actually they work vertically uh, because you can kind of grab it from the top or the bottom but horizontally, it can be a bit of a challenge. And there's other, and now also with our cabinets, um, we're moving toward the touch again. So you can just touch and they will open. 
so there's, again, as we see many of the ideas that are pretty straightforward, our manufacturers are now understanding that we are very interested in making these positive changes for our homes and actually being able to use our homes um, very easily. And, and these changes can be very straightforward and, and easy to implement in your own home. The microwave at counter level. <laughs> so uh, here we have the, the big X, right? Mounted up high. Um, having the, the microwave, because so many of the times this is what we're using as an auxiliary or maybe our primary source of cooking. So being able to have some counter space next to it and having it at counter height. So we're not trying to lift down some hot items um, as well is really the key. I mean, we're really looking at safety here and usability in our homes without the danger of tipping hot liquids or hot food or even you know, reaching for a hot plate and then dropping it out of the microwave when it's above us. There are also now the below counter, the drawer style microwaves as well. So these are just ways for us to look at making sure that we're safe and have some, make sure that in, like in this case, we've got some counter space on one side of the microwave. Uh, we wanna be able to have a place that's heat resistant that you can put the items down right away when you're cooking with the microwave. Uh, so does we have any questions or anything in the chat about a few of the kitchen ideas? Not just yet. Um, let me ask you though, I, I actually have a question for Sil uh, for Sil um, there's the microwave uh, in the upper left hand corner mm -hmm. that photograph. There's not an X through that photograph. Right. Should right. there be? Um, I, I want to say yes, uh, but I think this is up here to kind of acknowledge the fact that m many of us have this now. So if you sometimes when you're, you're buying a home or we've, you know, we've already made that decision, mm -hmm. we're, we're kind of looking to how to make a, a new decision or change the decision here. So I can't say no. I think what's, what's tricky about this one is the actual shelf placement and it, it looks a, a little less secure mm -hmm. up here, kind of just balanced on this shelf. But this is, you know, this kind of is what it is right now. Mm -hmm. um, but I, but ideally. Mo right, moving forward, yeah, a better place would be to have it on the counter um, or like this drawer style mm -hmm. um, mounted in an easier, easier access. And it's really to just, basically basic safety about hot items coming out and um, again kind of tipping forward on us. Absolutely. Hey Fritz, I want to just give you a time check. We're at a little after 10 30 uh, uh, and uh, speed it up. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right less narrative more speed. Okay folks here we go. So the question, um, do you have steps inside or outside your home? So in, in, in lieu of doing this poll, and because I, I'm not on time yet, you all can just nod. <laughs> um, we're gonna nod. Okay, we're gonna nod. Steps inside or outside the house. And so this part is, again, in the Home Fit Guide. Um, we're looking at really some important parts about um, the stairs. So the, this is the depressing part, folks. The leading cause of, inj of injury-related deaths among folks over 65 is falls. And... The statistics are one in three over 65 will fall, one in two over 80. And 
So all of this, I mean, the lighting we were talking about, fall risk mitigation, and now we want to make sure that if we have stairs, again, that we uh, mitigate as many of the risks related to the stairs as possible. So certainly handrails on both sides. So if, if your stairs look like this now, certainly adding a handrail on the other side is going to be um, absolutely vital. And although these are carpeted, we're also going to talk about um, the importance of a non-slip surface. So handrails is one important safety feature. Um, the next is lighting. And on the left, this is an example of motion sensor lighting that's been installed along this entire set of stairs. So this was built in to this frame. Um, but again, you can also get the strip lighting. I call it lights on a ribbon um, that can be simply attached right along that stairway. So this is an example of another kind of lighting. Um, many interior stairs have st um, manual switches at the top and the bottom, uh, but certainly extra lighting. Um, there are, there's lighting that you could add to the front of the stair risers um, that are also motion sensor. So as you approach the stairs, then the fronts of the stairs um, are all lit up as well. And the other key part of our stairs is the non-slip surface. So these have uh, non-slip treads added. Um, this has some non-slip strips, I'm sorry. Uh, again, this has got a non-slip surface with the visibility strip right at the edge and some contrast as well. So it's very important for our vision that we are able to see where each of the steps is so it's a combination of lighting here and, visit and visibility. Uh, this they've given us is an example of reflective tape that we could use on exterior stairs um, as well to ensure some uh, additional safety. And the, the visibility of, it's important that, that this strip is really at the edge and in some cases for interior stairs as well, we can do them on what's called the nose of the stair. So you can get um, little lights that just adhere to the front of the nose of the stair, so you can identify that. Another quick solution on stairs is simply painting the risers. So this picture shows us all the treads, but the risers themselves can be painted in a contrasting color that will give us another visual clue as we go up the stairs. So the fronts of these stairs, this wall is a cream color. The front of those stairs could be painted to match the wall color, but it would be a significant contrast to the wood on the top of the stairs. Okay, here we go. Bathrooms. Okay, so this is the, <laughs> the this was certainly the, the room that got the most votes early on. And um, we have lots of opportunities to improve the safety in our uh, uh, bathrooms. So grab bars. Um, Jonathan will tell you that one of my soap boxes, one of my soap box issues is uh, grab bars. And grab bars are the new seat belts, folks. Everybody needs them. So they have come a long way in terms of design. There are manufacturers now that make them in bright colors, uh, multiple finishes, multiple lengths, uh, and grab bars come in many different styles. So uh, there are towel bars that are grab bars with a place for the towel. The toilet paper holder can also be a grab bar. The soap dish in the shower can be a grab bar. There are grab bars now that can go around the shower control to provide another secure place to hold on. So the key really is proper installation and the proper selection for you, for your home. 
these definitely not no right these they don't stay they're not secure they're very dangerous um, they give us kind of a false sense of security in many cases uh, so your regular towel bars um, you, those can come off and you can replace them with towel bar grab bars as an example but again many manufacturers uh, many designs now um, including uh, the manufacturers are doing the new uh, matte black that match the new sink fixtures in the designs coming out now where we're using and that contrast is really helpful for us but it ties into the overall design of the bathroom this is another style for a tub um, as a support that uh, screws into the tub itself but certainly um, many manufacturers have ways for you to do it yourself at home if you have any questions reach out to a professional who understands the wall the backing the material and can ensure that it gets installed properly having a handheld shower head is another way to improve our safety and make it easier in the bathroom this one is the newer style but it still kind of clicks in here so you have an overhead and a handheld uh, this is an example of the magnetic head so you're not trying to just figure out how to get the handheld back in to the slot um, but the head itself just you just hold it up and the magnet will pull it back into place uh, we recommend also that when you do this that you consider having what i call the, the docking station so you don't have to put it up there all the time but you don't want it all over the hall swinging around the bath uh, shower floor so you can just have a little station here and they do make them for the magnet ones as well where you can just put the head over there while you're getting out of the shower so you don't always have to put it back up to the top uh, but it's an easy way to have uh, more flexibility and uh, in the shower raised toilets so this is a picture of a comfort height and that just makes getting on and off uh, much easier, truly. Um, this is another style. Um, there are um, also styles where they're called uh, toilevators where you, the, this riser portion is placed at the underneath the base of the toilet so it's not as visually apparent when you come into the bathroom so there's again uh, more styles now but certainly it does help um, for so you don't have to um, get down quite as far um, this one also happens to this is a an example also of a wall to floor um, grab bar with an outrigger so this is another style if you have any specific uh, bathroom questions, you could probably put those in the chat or Q&A and I'll try to get to those as well. So these were some very straightforward things. We wanna also keep in mind the flooring. So making sure that our flooring is non-slip and it's non-slip in the shower and the tub as well. There's products to make slippery floors non-slip. Um, you're using any of the rugs just make sure that they are secured and rubber backed so the do it yourself and don't do it yourself <laughs> um, again there are um, lots of different kinds of things that we can do and certainly the the do it yourself is you know you can install night lights uh, maybe replace the knobs on the handles uh, there may be a way that you can see with a small transitions ramp, for example, that you can create your own step three entrance. Um, but don't be shy about really being clear, like what is it that I want to do myself? Uh, what is it that I want to reach out and have a handy family member do um, or a professional do uh, for us? So um, installing 
outside lights. Uh, some of the easy battery ones you can certainly do yourselves. Um, I'm not going to be a big proponent of climbing, climbing on ladders uh, unless that's really um, a safe place for you. In terms of hiring a contractor, so this is some uh, quick tips on hiring a contractor. Um, this is just kind of our common sense, you know, first understanding what we need, again, kind of reaching out, checking our, our resources. Um, when you're hiring contractors as well, for whom the license is important, here in California, the California Licensing Board for con the Contractors Licensing Board <clears throat> is um, an easy website. You can put in a business name, an owner's name, um, or a license number if they've given you a license number, and you can check the status of their license um, and the supporting documentation that uh, gives them their business a legitimacy here in the state of California. Um, certainly uh, getting everything in writing and that's where you understand what the scope of work is in particular so that you're absolutely sure and then you know withholding your payment till your work is done to your satisfaction the home assessment process so you do have the checklist there um, again in the home fit guide it talks to two folks who do home assessments, occupational therapists in the healthcare professional world are trained um, to look at the house and to look at you in your home and how well you're operating in your home. A certified aging in place specialist um, are folks who have taken very specific training through the National Home Builders <clears throat> on uh, design concepts in the house and implementation. So they are also uh, resources for you. Uh, luckily, Jonathan put together some local resources as well as national resources on um, home fit and home modification um, ideas and uh, checklists as well. Although this one is, these worksheets that have come with this program are really among the best. Uh, for your local resources, you have the Marin Health and Human Resources, Marin County, and this will stop. Um, so, questions? Do we this has been great, Fritzy. Thank you for walking us through all of this. Uh, I, you know, one of the things that for somebody who's, who's uh, kind of uh, getting up there and, and having experience with my own parents, kind of the, the challenges and the, 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 the risks mm -hmm. of, of accidents and falls in the home. Um, I'm looking around my own home and trying to figure out what to do. And I think one of the questions that I wonder if other people have as well is how do, how do I prioritize? There's, there's a, there, is, there are 37 things in my house <laughs> right. you know, that I need done. I need you know, grab bars. I need better lighting. I need... Uh, D-shaped handles on my cabinets. Mm -hmm. Where do I begin and how do I prioritize? Do you have any guidance for, for me and others? Yes. Start with the bathroom. Hmm. <laughs> not just because of the pole. Yeah, just no, not because of the pole. I mean, I, I have another workshop I do called Start with the Bathroom. Anybody can cook. Um, and that was pre-COVID when it's like anybody can get food delivered. Um, because the, we, we want to keep our dignity, we want to keep our safety, we want to keep our privacy. And if our bathrooms aren't safe, then that means somebody else is going to have to come in and help us at some point. So I always say start with the bathroom. And then the next one is um, looking at your lighting and your entrances. Um, and then I go to the kitchen because I think uh, the lighting, you know, tripping hazards, you know, some of the, the basics that we hear over and over and over are still applicable here. But I always encourage folks to start with the bathroom and at the very least check for the non-slip surfaces and the lighting 
and the grab bars. Start there and, um, and then go from there. That makes sense. And in terms of, all right, so we know our priorities. <laughs> um, now what? You know, do we sh start shopping? Do we, do we reach out to, uh, you know, certified aging in place specialists? Do we, do we do the home assessment? You know, how, now what? Do we, do we get the products first or do we get the, the, the installers first? You know, can you give us any guidance there? Uh, okay. So one of the advantages of having all of these worksheets is it gives us a chance to figure out where we are, what we want to do and what we don't want to do, and then where we're going to go with that. So yes, if we know already that there are three things that we can do for ourselves and at the end of this week, we're going to be safer than we were at the beginning of the week, then you and I have accomplished our goal for the week, right? Because somebody has taken those steps to do that. So in our, so those things that you know you can do, just do them, you know, just get a couple lights, do the non-slip strips on the floor, just to do those. And then reach out for an evaluation of the house, like a fuller look by someone who um, has those eyes and will look at it. This is, this is really just to give us a preview and a chance to look at our homes. But in fact, um, having someone who is a CAP specialist, um, someone who's a, you know, a home safety specialist, you know, people who know and can see past what we can see in our own homes. That's a big advantage for us because if we run out and buy products, then we may be almost right. So certainly for those things that we know we can do and, you know, I want grab bars in everybody's home. So find a grab bar installer, um, install them yourself, have somebody install, but you know, they, you know, make sure because they have to support 250 pounds. I mean, there's a whole lot of rules about this the material that goes into this, you know, all of those little details, but do those, but to go out and buy a lot of different kinds of products and then kind of sit around and say, okay, who's going to help me with this? It might be better to, you know, kind of tackle one area at a time, but then you use the services of a professional mm -hmm. to help formulate what that plan looks like. And also we need to take a look at what our needs are. I mean, do we have all of a sudden, um, do we have a family member who's going to be moving into our home? You know, and do they have some different challenges than we do um, that we didn't have before that we weren't going to, you know, um, and I just, I, I had a call, you know, a man's is bringing his mom from Arizona. He goes, she has to, you know, she wasn't going to live with us, but now she is. Mm -hmm. And what do we need to do to get ready for her? So not only things for ourselves and for aging in place and looking forward, uh, but there's so many changes, especially after this last six months, people are reframing how they're looking at their homes. Mm -hmm. And in addition, if we're going to be converting spaces to more permanent home office, if we're going to convert things to more homeschooling, are we going to dedicate rooms differently than things like how the lighting changes and, and how we use those spaces uh, will also change. Excellent. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I've got a question from Claudia. Um, are there providers for plumbing refinishers who work in the evenings without charging an overtime rate? And is the best place to find such a person through the organizations that were just listed? Uh, or, and I'll add to Claudia's question, or do you go through Home Advisor or TaskRabbit or one of these, you know, handyman services type of thing? Um, okay, so th that's a good question. And I, I can't answer, I can't give you the name of somebody who works in the evening and doesn't charge overtime. I don't, I don't know that. Um, but depending on the specialty that you're looking for, then um, starting with your local resources to see. I mean, and um, certainly if you're looking for a CAPS person or, I mean, locally to, I mean, reach out to Jonathan and, you know, work with him to find some, some local resources. 
Um, but I don't know for sure that there is anybody that works in the evening specifically without charging. Um, and there, and also there, there may be other resources for um, some of these items that uh, for folks who need to reach out for minor home modifications, like with the Habitat for Humanity folks, or with other support organizations like Jewish Family Services or Interfaith Council or um, some of those other organizations as well. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I mean, there are, I mean, there's not, o there's not only places like Yelp and TaskRabbit or, or the National Association from Home Builders that has a list of uh, certified agent and place specialists, but there are resources out there and some of them are listed mm -hmm. in, that, uh, in, in that slide that you just showed. Uh, that for people who don't necessarily have uh, the the cash to spend on these services, there are resources mm -hmm. available out there for people mm -hmm. who, who need the changes made but might, might not be able to afford it. Right. Claudia, I hope that helps answer your question. All right. I, well, Fritzi, I, um, I'd love for you to uh, kind of uh, share your contact information. And then I'm going to uh, kind of share a slide myself in, okay. in wrapping up here. Um, okay. So why don't you go for it? Okay. So this is me again. Um, I have a toll-free number, uh, my cell number. I'm happy to, to uh, you can also text me, <laughs> as Jonathan knows. Uh, and you can uh, email me, fritzy at hsafeamerica.com with any kinds of questions. I'm happy to I'm happy to answer them and see how I can be of service to you. Awesome. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. This has been fantastic. I'm going to um, I'm going to now share my screen in, in terms of next step for next steps for everybody that's been. Uh, this will stop other screen sharing. Yes. Please hold while I overshare my screen with everybody at home. Um, whoops. So I'm just sharing this. So um, a, a couple of points in, in wrapping up here, not only in thanking Fritzi for your wonderful presentation and your generous uh, uh, um, donation of time to this event, super appreciated and it's super helpful and you've been also on a personal level uh, a great friend to me and i'm super excited that you're in my life and that we have this <laughs> connection now so thank you for that um i also just want to invite everybody who's on the uh the call here today um to know that i uh will be offering a free home safety consultation i'm trained as a certified agent in place specialist myself and for those people that actually go through uh, the steps of filling out that AARP checklist. If you fill that out and contact me, I will actually take an hour of my time and sit down with you and review that checklist in detail with you and help put together a plan for you for moving forward and making improvements to your home. So I've got my email address there, john, J-O-N, at iaplaces.com with my telephone number. Uh, and so I want to encourage every, everybody who wants to, uh, you know, kind of um, uh, have a free consultation to take advantage of this offer. Um, I also want to invite people to share comments about this uh, session with me uh, at the same email address. Uh, again, we want to make sure that this is engaging as possible as we move forward and that we make um, as much improvements as we possibly can to make it uh, more and more uh, worth your while. Um, and finally, I want to encourage everybody to sign up for additional workshops at iaplaces.com. And uh, there's a whole bunch of new sessions scheduled in the coming weeks. And um, we'd love to see you uh, back again along with uh, a friend or two. So I think that does it for today. Uh, Fritzi, anything else from, from your end? No, I think we're good. Thank you very much okay. for this opportunity. And I'm looking forward to being able to answer questions and um, help folks as we need to. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, guys, this uh, concludes our session. Thank you again for, uh, for attending and we hope to see you again soon. Take care.